I'm Micah Smith, and this is Bot Store Spotlights. In this video, I want to take a look at the file and folder attributes package. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I'm a huge fan of custom packages. Custom packages enable you to add custom functionality to Automation 360, and those custom packages can be used by any RPA developer who's using your environment. Now, fortunately, there are tons of freely available, already created bot store packages that you can choose from. But if you want to create your own custom packages, you can do that as well using the custom package SDK. And using that package SDK, you can expose services that you might have within your organization. You could make a wrapper for an API call, uh, all kinds of fun stuff that you can do with custom packages. So in this session, we're going to take a look specifically at the file and folder attributes package. So jumping into this one, there are five total actions in this package. Files and folders deep, uh, file attributes, files in folder, folder attributes, and folders in folder. Now, as we go through these, I'm gonna show you how each of these work, but very briefly, files in folder deep will show you all of the um, files and folders within a directory, so that includes all subdirectories. File attributes will show you lots of different attributes about a specific file. So in that case, you would give a full path to a single file and it would show you all the attributes about that. Those attributes can change slightly depending on the file. So if it's like a PDF, it'll show you the number of pages in the PDF. It'll show you the size. It will show you the width and height. It'll also show you the other attributes like last time it was accessed, modified time, full uh, file size and extension and things like that. For files and folder, it will show you a list of all of the files within a folder. You can also do some cool sorting with that. So you can sort by name, sort by date, you can sort by uh, file size, and you can do those both in ascending and descending order. Folder attributes will show you the attributes of a folder. So, hey, how many files are in it? How many files in all the subdirectories? What's the size of the folder? When was it last modified? Stuff like that, who's the owner? And then finally, folders and folder will show you a list of all of the folders within that folder. In case you want to do that recursive looping, you could loop through a single folder, figure out all the folders within that folder, and then loop through those child folders as well. So let's jump over into this. The first thing I want to show you is that exactly where this is on bot store. So if you go to botstore.automationanywhere.com, you can do a search for file and folder attributes package. And this is the package that will show up. And I, it was actually just updated. Uh, I'm recording this on the 20th of October. It was updated today. It was first published in September. I added a couple other uh, functionalities to it. I also wanna point out here that the full source code is available. So if you wanna understand how this works, understand how it was made, if you wanna do a pull request, you can do that. Um, all of the code for this is in the GitHub repository for Automation Anywhere. So that full path is right here. You can go and check it out. You can see how it works. You can even make modifications to it if you want, okay? Now, the other thing I wanna show you is if you are a Community Edition user, you can still install this custom package. So what you would do is you would hit on the Get Package, and there's two options when you select Get Package here. One is to add to the control room automatically. That's something that's available only for enterprise users at this time. The other option is to download as a zip file. And when you download it as a zip file, it's going to download that zip locally for you. And you can see mine's downloading right now. Um, it's about 70 meg, maybe? Yeah, just about 70 meg. So if I were in my Community Edition control room, what I could do from there is once you're logged in and you're on that automation tab, you'll see a button in the top right corner that says import bots. If you click on that and then select the zip file that we just downloaded, I'm not actually gonna do it right now, but if you select that zip file and then hit import bots, it will import the bots, which in this case, there's a sample bot that's included. Uh, you won't be able to see that part, but you will see the package showing up in your control room from then on out. So that's the way that you can get these packages into your control room if you're using Community Edition. Now. To talk about how this package actually works, I've got a really basic sample bot set up and I can share this bot with you uh, after this video. But what it's doing here is it's just prepping a sample directory. So I've got a repository set up with some just dummy files in it and I'm downloading that locally to my temp directory and then I'm unzipping it. So I'm gonna execute this bot real quick and that way we have some temp files 
on our local directory that we can reference um, for the rest of these actions. So again, this is just gonna download some sample files. If you wanna do this with me, that way you have the exact same files and uh, you'll be able to follow along exactly with what I'm doing. Okay, so that bot has completed its execution. I'm going to navigate to the C temp directory. I can see the zip file is file attributes demo.zip. I can also see here the folder that it created is called file and folder attributes demo dash main. So I'm gonna copy the path to this uh, directory because we're gonna use that for the rest of the actions we're gonna look at. I'm gonna start by disabling this top action. I don't need that download to happen every single time. So I'm just gonna disable that. Looking at the file and folder attributes uh, act or uh, package, I should say, I'm gonna drag over the very first one, which is files in folder deep. And in this example, I will give a directory and then it will return to me a uh, list. And that list is, I'm gonna call uh, L files in folder and hit create and select. So it's gonna return to me a list of all of the files that are found in this root directory as well as all subsequent subdirectories. To display that, I'm going to use another bot store package that is the Java FX package. I use this a lot when I'm just kind of playing around with different variables or I wanna see how um, values are being filled. One way you could do that is through debugging. I like to do it this way. So I'm gonna select this show list action and drag that over. And here you simply just choose your list. You give a button label, so I'm gonna say close and you give a width and a height. I'm gonna say something really obnoxious for the width so we can see everything. 900 by 500. I'll hit save, and then we can run that. Okay, so while this is executing, what we should expect here is we will see a huge list of files. And again, that's gonna be every single file that was found in this root directory as well as all subdirectories. Why is this important? Well, if I'm looking for a specific file and I need to find it within a folder or subfolders, this is a good way to do it. This also gives me some perspective as to how large my directory actually is. So if I need to, for whatever reason, go through this, I can do so. So we see here that it's showing me all of those files. Again, the folder that we gave was just up to this uh, folder file and folder attributes demo dash main slash nothing but we can see there's a folder called icons, there's a folder called com, this is a file that's in that root directory. Um, so lots and lots of files here, I can see all of those. If I needed to copy any of these paths or make use of those, or maybe I wanna loop through everything in this list and grab the file size for each, I'd have the ability to do that. Cool, so the next one we wanna look at is whatever is in the list, let's go back here, file attributes. So I'm just gonna replace the uh, what we have there because I don't wanna keep doing the same actions over and over. So I will press uh, control and forward slash is the shortcut for disabling actions. Uh, we have a shortcut video that just went out so you should be able to find those as well. Uh, here I can evaluate a file that is on desktop or in a control room. I'm again gonna select desktop. Uh, I will grab the path to that PDF file, so right here. And what I'm gonna do is click Copy Path. And again, this is that same directory that I was suggesting you to download at the very beginning or what, what I used uh, for this demo. So when I copy path, it does put it in quotes because that's the Windows way to do it. Um, so that in case there's a space in here, it can still be referenced properly. So I deleted those quotes and we just have the path to the file. Now, when I get a return from this action, it's going to give me all of the details about this file. So everything that it knows about the file, it you know the directory that it's in, the extension, the size, all that kind of stuff. It can return those as variables or as a dictionary. I'm going to select to return that as a dictionary because I want to display all of them together. So I'm gonna say D file attributes and hit create and select and then hit save. I'm gonna do the exact same thing we did last time where I'm just gonna add a JavaFX uh, action right below it. 
so that I can basically just bring up a, a dummy form to show me all of the values that we captured. So here I'm gonna select uh, D file attributes. My button label again is gonna be close and I'll do the same thing 900 by 500 and hit run. Now, you might be saying, well, I want to understand exactly when I would use some of these actions. And I would specifically say that there are use cases I've heard of where people are saying, hey, how do I find the smallest file in a folder? Or how do I understand if this was the last one that was modified? Or I need to know the exact size of this file in dimensions, right? I need to know how wide it is and how tall it is because I use that for my decision making. So that's where you would use something like this file and folder attributes. It allows you to really dig deep into the file to understand a lot of its parameters. So here we're looking at the attributes of just that PDF file. We can see its modified date. We can see who the owner is. We can see if it's hidden or not, the size, the file name itself, uh, sans the extension. Here's the extension down here. We have the folder that it came from. We have the height, because this is a PDF, it includes height in millimeters as well as width in millimeters, as well as the number of pages that that PDF has. Those attributes won't show up on every single file, but if it's a PDF, they will. If it's an image file format, it'll just show the height and width in pixels. Um, and if it's not one of those image file or PDF file formats, you'll still get the rest of this data. Uh, you just wouldn't get the page counts and things like that because they're really not relevant for most file types. All right. Two down, let's go ahead and look at the next action, which is files and folder. So this is similar to what we saw previously with the file and folders deep. Uh, however, with two main differences. One, I can actually choose a sorting method. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that same path here. I'm just gonna copy this one. So again, this is just uh, the files in folder action. This is not the files in folder deep. Here, because it's just that root level, right? I'm only looking at files in that directory. I'm not looking for anything in subdirectories or anything like that. I can choose a, a sorting method and I can choose by date, by name, or by size. One thing I wanna call out by name. Uh, if I use the by name sorting, it does the sorting just like Windows does, okay? It doesn't do it where like, uh, let's see, it wouldn't go 1, 10, 2, right? This will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you're familiar with uh, seeing the sorting of files through any other scripting language, you might notice that the file sorting order is out of order. This was switched so it'll match exactly like Windows uh, name sorting. So I'm gonna say, let's say I wanna see uh, all files by size ascending, right? I'm gonna put that into my list variable that we used before, and I'll just enable this action so that we can use the same one. And this will allow me to see all of the files in this specific directory. Again, this is not going to contain anything that is in a subdirectory, only the files in this root directory. Again, why would this matter? I've heard of a lot of use cases where someone will say, yeah, every day uh, we have this system that drops off a file into this directory. We just have to grab the newest file and then that's the one we use for whatever data manipulation or data migration that we're doing. This is a super easy way to find that. You can see the newest file. You can see the smallest file. Whatever, whatever it is that you're looking for, uh, you can find that. And so here it's telling me that uh, sample text.txt, um, readme, all the way up to this PDF, which I assume to be the largest. So if we go back to our directory, and sort by size, we should see a matching order. Let's go this way, ascending. So here we see sample text, followed by get attributes, readme, package JSON success. So this matches exactly what we would expect from the Windows file system when sorting by size ascending. We'll close that. Cool. The next one we wanna look at is the folder attributes. And the folder attributes will tell me everything that it knows about the directory that's provided. So this is very similar to what we already saw in the file attributes, except this time I'm gonna give a directory instead of a path to a file. So again, I'm just gonna put in the uh, directory path. Let me maximize this a little bit. This is the path to that folder that we had downloaded. Uh, again, I'm gonna have this return as a dictionary. I'm gonna have it return the D file attributes 
and I will, oh yeah, I'm gonna enable this JavaFX so we can see the outcome and then we'll hit run. Uh, again, this is gonna tell me everything that it knows about the, the folder. So how many files are in it? What's the size? What was the modified date? Who owns it? Stuff like that. Um, again, this is very useful for me to be able to identify, is there a file there? Is that folder empty? Do we have empty directories or orphan directories we need to clean up? Uh, this is a great way for me to, be able to do that. So looking at our JavaFX dictionary view here, I can see who's the owner. I can see the immediate file count. So how many files are within this root directory itself. I can also see the total file count. So that includes the root directory files as well as all files found in subdirectories. I can see the count of folders within this folder. I can also see a total folder count, which again means there are three folders in the root directory, but there are six total folders contained within this folder or path that I gave. I can also see the size and defined by bytes. Um, so I can see exactly how large this folder is and I can see if it's hidden or not. Great. So the very last one we wanna look at is folders in folder. And as you might have guessed, this will return to me a list of all of the folders that were in the directory given. So we just looked at the uh, folder attributes I know that there are three folders that are contained within this directory. I will write those out to this L files and folder. I'm gonna comment out these last two. I know we're kind of jumping around and making a mess. That's not something I normally do when I'm building bots, but because I'm just showing some of the features of this package, uh, I think it's excusable. So this one should show me just a list of all of the folders that are found within this folder with their full paths. Uh, and that way I have the ability, if I want to, to loop through those. I could loop through all of those folders, ignoring any files that were contained within this root directory and uh, know that I'm hitting directories and not hitting files themselves. So here we should see a list of those three folders. So I've got com, icons, and locales. This was a random folder that I grabbed from the uh, package itself. So that's where those names come from. But uh, I see the path for each of these. Again, this is a list, so I do have the ability to loop through that if I wanted to, and I could iterate through that and take some kind of action in each of those folders. So again, you can go find this package and its code both in Bot Store, uh, and there's a link to the full code in our GitHub repository as well. If you wanna check it out, you wanna see how it works, you wanna add to it, those are all great things. I would encourage you to take a look at that, okay? Be sure to like and subscribe for more Bot Store Spotlights and Automation 360 content. Again, my name is Micah Smith. Go be great.